Well, welcome into my new favorite series on the channel called Is It Too Late? Where today we are talking about is it too late to buy Uber stock, otherwise known as Uberdy Booba stock. I've done several videos over the past couple weeks on this new series. I did one called Is It Too Late to Buy Facebook Stock when it was at $202. I did one on Is It Too Late to Buy Beyond Meat Stock? That's when it was $97 a share. I did one on Tesla Stock when it was $380 a share. And here today we're talking about Uber Stock. And when Whenever I do a video on this series, it's usually on a stock that has went up a bunch recently. And definitely in Uber's case, the stock has gone up quite a bit. Like, I mean, just look at today, it's up over 5%, it's over $37 a share. If we go ahead and pull up a three month chart on Uber stock, the stock has performed very well, especially over the past two months. I mean, you look at this stock in November, it was just reaching new lows and new lows. It was going through a very, very tough time. Let's just put it that way, okay? Stock was bottoming out at, you know, $26 a share. $27 a share and it was just bumping against its all-time low pretty much day in and day out and you look at the stock chart since that time it has pretty much been up up and away in here today uber stocks trading over $37 a share that's a long way from you know 26 or where it was trading at just a couple months ago now remember when we look at this chart it's bottoming out in November what else happened in November well guess what on November 6 that was uber's lockup expiration so that's when all the insiders could sell in early day investors and whatnot. And it put a ton of selling pressure on Uber stock during that particular time period. Plus people were a little scared to buy in at that particular time because they didn't know where the bottom was for Uber stock. Was the bottom $20 a share? Was it $25 a share? Was it $15 a share? Nobody knew. So a lot of people were really, really scared to buy in. Travis Kalanick, who used to be the face of Uber, sold out of all of his shares, okay? And he also left the board of directors in December. Now, some people looked at that as a positive in the respect that Travis Kalanick, he just had a bad name being associated with Uber. And then some people looked at that as, no, we still want Travis Kalanick as part of the company. And so you had very conflicting feelings there, but he was selling out of all his shares, putting a ton more selling pressure on the stock. Now, meanwhile, I was buying extremely heavy. I think I started buying the stock. It was either in September or October, and then I continued to buy it super heavy throughout November, and I was getting destroyed. I was down thousands of dollars on Uber stock. And now here today, uh, we're up nearly $13,000 in one of my accounts and the other account I hold Uber were up over 12,000. So I don't know, we're up a car on Uber. And so a lot has changed in regards to Uber stock price specifically over the course of the last couple months. So now the question is, is it too late to buy Uber, okay? So we start out here, we wanna look at Uber's market capitalization, okay? It's gonna be obviously very important to kind of figure out on a valuation basis if Uber's interesting, all right? So Uber right now trades at about $63.5 billion market cap, which is certainly, you know, nothing to sneeze at. Like, that's a pretty dang big market cap. There are not that many companies that have $63 billion market caps. I don't think we should ever lose focus on the fact that, you know, some of these companies now have a trillion plus dollar market cap. The Apples, the Amazon, Amazons, the Googles, you know, uh, Microsoft, those type of companies that have these trillion dollar market caps. Let's not lose focus on the fact that still a $63 billion market cap is still a big market cap company, all right? Now, where I think this gets very interesting is there was an interview done with the CEO of Uber, Dara Karzashari. I can never pronounce his last name right, but I'm getting a little better each video, okay? So there was an interview done with him by the New York Times, and this is posted up on YouTube, so any of you guys can watch this interview after this video. And in that video, Toward the end, he is pushed on a subject of profitability for the company by a, a lady named Kara Swisher, okay? Now, she's definitely not my favorite lady. And she came off very, very aggressive toward Dara. And Dara really opened up in a big way. Like, I've never heard him open up when he comes to like doing the math around how Uber is gonna get very, very profitable over the course of the next few years. I hadn't heard him talk like that publicly at all. Maybe he had talked like that to maybe some big investors, uh, you know, behind closed doors or something, but I had never heard him publicly speak the way he did in that particular interview after she asked those questions I think she just got mad because the way she was framing questions was kind of like in a disrespectful manner and you I mean just look at the top comments for that video you gotta love YouTube okay look at the top comments on that video okay these are the, the top comments says I'd really like to see Cara the lady that was asking that question run a business herself instead of spending her time insulting everyone who's attempted to balance customer expectations and a set of employees at the same time maybe she could start with a Burger King 
Thanksgiving or Hardee's and then she can tell everyone how much they should be paid. If business leaders listen to everything she said, there wouldn't be a startup economy for her to complain about. And that, that is very true, okay? <laughs> then the next comment down, why the F would anybody give Kara a mic? And although I'm definitely not a fan of Kara, I gotta say, man, I, I'm, I'm happy she like, like framed the questions the way she did and kind of came at it from a uh, kind of a little bit of a disrespectful manner because she was able to get some information out of Dara that honestly I've never heard him reveal those sorts of things okay he starts going into the math behind it I think he was you know a little offended by the way she kind of framed the questions and whatnot and he's like okay you actually have to do the math and he starts going through the math on uber and how this company is going to likely get to three billion dollars plus on the bottom line of profitability we're talking net income within the next few years and so that's really an intriguing interview to watch to anybody out there that is interested in uber stock or owns uber stock that's a must watch especially the back half of it it's uh you know really enlightening on you know how uber gets to profitability okay and if you're wondering how does uber get profitable this company's always been a money loser you know still to this day the company loses money how can Uber get profitable? And there are two ways this company gets profitable, okay? One is by things that happened like today, okay? Uber surges 6% after offloading its Indian food delivery business. Uber announced Monday that it had sold its Indian food delivery service to a competitor, Zumato, for a 9.99% stake. Offloading parts of the business that are not profitable brings Uber closer to its goal of being profitable on an EBITDA basis by 2021. And so you look at a business like that for Uber, it was something that was you know, losing the company money. And so the company could continue to lose money, continue to lose money, try to get market share, and throw money at this business, or they could just say, you know what, why don't we just get an ownership in your business and then we'll get out of this business and then you'll be able to raise prices a lot easier. Because if now we're partners and I'm not trying to compete with you, now we're not in a price war. And now I want you to succeed because I have ownership in your business, okay? And this is not the first time Dara has made some decisions like this since he took over as CEO of Uber, okay? Uber has already made billions from its exits from China, Russia, and Southeast Asia. And so Uber over the past year or two has made some decisions in some of these markets where they went to the main company they were competing with and like, you know what, we're, we're kind of losing this market share battle against you guys. We're losing a ton of money from this. You guys are losing a ton of money from this. What if we just maybe exit this business, you guys give us a 10% ownership, a 15% ownership, a 20% ownership stake. And we will exit this business and you guys can kind of have a monopoly. And meanwhile, we can have an ownership position which we can sell out down the road. And as you guys start to make profits and the company you know, grows and grows its market cap, our valuation's gonna go up and up. When it comes to the fact that we own 10% of your business, like they now own you know, 10% of Zumato or 15% ownership in a service like DD which is the Uber of China. When you think about all this, Dar is playing a big game of chess, okay? Dar is playing a big game of chess out there and the checker players, they just don't understand what's going on. They just don't get this. Some of them see some of these moves and they're like, why would they exit that business? There's a big potential there. And it's like, sure, there's big potential there, but the company's also gonna have to lose $2 billion over the next, you know, three years or five years for the company to even think about, you know, getting positive profits down the road. Or they could just leave that market Market. They could just wash their hands of that, get ownership in the company that's going to be there, and then that company will be able to reach profitability much, much faster. Uber doesn't have to go from a position of losing billions of dollars. Now their stakes in those companies are worth billions or tens of billions, and so Uber makes out twice as good as if they were actually competing in those markets. This is chess. This isn't checkers, okay? Dara is a phenomenal CEO and just businessman in general. This man's amazing. When he was over there at Expedia, the gross values of its hotels and other travel bookings more than quadrupled and its pre-tax earnings more than doubled. And when Dara was running Expedia, they were the ones that were purchasing a lot of companies. I think over time, Dara just realized maybe we shouldn't necessarily buy some companies out 
outright, maybe it's better to just get an ownership stake in some of these companies and maybe just sell out down the road when the valuation's gone 2x, 3x, 4x. Because the companies go from you know losing a bunch of money to also making a lot of profits because there just aren't you know competitors to compete with in those markets, okay? And this is a guy that you know success just follows him around. His uncle Hassan also fled Iran during the Iranian Revolution and is now a billionaire. His cousin Amir co-founded Nirvana Systems, which was acquired by Intel in 2016 for 408 million. He is also related to Darian, the founder of Radius and the first intern hired by Facebook. So Dar is a very, very high level businessman at the end of the day, and this is a guy running Uber. And so when I think it's all set and done, you know, years from now and Uber becomes this massively profitable business and one of the biggest, you know, companies in the world, I think Dar will go down as one of the best business man ever and I mean when you're just surrounded that bloodline of success and people having a lot of success in business everybody's sharing ideas back and forth and so you get to have very high level thinking on you know how to solve this problem how to solve that problem how to make a, a dollar out of 15 cents or maybe a hundred dollars out of 15 cents okay now for the second way how can uber get profitable so the first one obviously was just exiting some super money losing businesses and the second way is Price on Uber will go up. I don't care if we're talking about Uber Eats, Uber Rides, you know, Uber Freight, everything will get more expensive over time. And so let me break it down like this, okay? In the United States of America, which is where, you know, 60% of my audience lives, you guys know if you need a ride somewhere, you kind of have like, I guess you could say three options, right? You could take Uber, Lyft, or a taxi. Taxis are insanely expensive compared to Uber and Lyft, so those aren't even really an option for you. You're either taking an Uber or you're taking a Lyft if you need a ride somewhere, right? Well, those are two competitors, and Lyft is a company that is a money loser, huge money loser, and there's a ton of pressure on Lyft to get profitable ASAP from their investors. I mean, you look at the 52-week high on Lyft stock, it was $88. Today, the stock trades at 48, a massive, massive decrease there. And this is a company that had negative EBITDA of $2.5 billion, billion dollars last year. So there's a ton of pressure on all these different companies that might compete against Uber around the world to get profitable, especially with situations like the WeWork situation we saw recently. There's just a ton of pressure on these other companies to get profitable. How do you get profitable? You gotta raise prices a bit, and you gotta stop worrying so much about market share battles because if you if you're wondering well why didn't uber and lyft why didn't they just raise prices a bunch in past years well in past years uber and lyft were fighting market share battles so if you're fighting a market share battle then your main thought is not how do i become profitable how do i make a profit on this ride your main thought process as a company is how do we go from a 25 percent market share to a 35 percent market share or 30 percent market share and gosh maybe if we worry about profitability, maybe our market share will go down to 20%. Uber and Lyft and then just the other companies they compete with around the world are looking at this now and they're like, ah, uh, you know what? Let's not worry so much about market share anymore. Let's raise prices. And when these services raise prices, you know, 50 cents to let's say $2, most consumers aren't even going to notice that. And it's still going to be 40%, if not 50% cheaper than a taxi in most markets. And so if somebody's going to book that ride and it's 50 cents more expensive, $1.50 more expensive, they're still going to book it. And with all that pressure on these different companies to also get profitable, no one can worry about if, if my market share is 70% or 65% or 75%. These companies need to worry about is that ride I just gave a profitable ride or not? Because that's what these investors are looking at in the future. Like, did you lose money on that ride you just gave or did you make money? And if you lost money, why did you lose money? The other company you're competing with, you know, isn't worried about market share battles. So why are you gonna worry about a market share battle? Everybody in this space now is gonna wanna get profitable. Prices will go up. The food delivery space is gonna be still be very, very competitive for the next one to two years, but the ride side of their business is gonna get extremely profitable over the next year or two, okay? And then food delivery, as things consolidate, some of those companies go bankrupt, some of those companies get bought out by other companies. As consolidation happens there with the food delivery players, that will begin to get a, you know, a, become a very profitable business for Uber down the road, okay? So as I look at Uber here today, Company trading at, you know, let's say $64 billion market cap, right? Stock price over $37, having a great day. As I look at this stock, 
it is not necessarily like if I, let's say I didn't own one Uber share right now, I would personally still consider buying Uber stock, even though it's gone up from $25, $26 where it was just a few months ago. If I'm just looking at this business on a longer term basis, I believe Uber has a great you know, chance to have five to $10 billion of net income within probably the next five to six years. And when you look at it from a perspective of, let's say, you know, a $64 billion market cap, that's not a high valuation. And as long as your company can execute and get there, which I'm very confident they can just because there's pressure on the other players in these markets to also get profitable and they can't outspend Uber in the end. So just if you thought like, well, maybe these other companies will just disregard profits and they'll start, you know, competing on market share. They can't because Uber has way more money. Uber can end up bankrupting those companies. Uber has way more capital to spend out there and Uber can get financing if they needed to. So overall, Uber is just playing a high level game of chess here and the other players in these markets are figuring it out and it is what it is. And so Uber is a business that if I'm looking at a long-term basis, it should be a company that has a market cap someday of $150 billion, $200 billion, $250 billion. And if they can get there over, let's say the next five years, you know, the stock is still a steal here. And so I'm still very, very bullish at current prices. I've already built out my position, what I am willing to risk in the stock, which I own well over 3000 shares of Uber stock. What I'm willing to risk in that stock is already in it. So I'm not personally interested in buying more shares, but if I didn't have a position and I was just like starting to look into Uber, uh, I would definitely still consider it as an investment. Just for the mere fact, I think the company's gonna grow a lot in future years, okay? So you guys make your own decisions out there. Let me know in the comments what your opinion is on Uber stock, whether you hate this stock, whether you think it's a bad stock, a stock you wanna short, or whether you love this stock and you think it's got a big future. Would love to hear your guys' opinion in that comment section as always. I hope you guys enjoyed an in-depth video like this looking at Uber stock. Make sure you smash the thumbs up on that shows that you know you guys enjoyed the video, all right? Thank you for watching. Have a great day.